Hey everyone, Spicy Toast Gaming here. I hope you're having a great day and I hope this video can make it a little bit better. We're going to be going through all of the different monthly challenges and I am going to be giving you some suggestions on what champions you might want to pick and what champions you may want to avoid. Now, one thing to note, do not go by the champions that I have chosen for my challenges. I did a fun little challenge on stream where I let chat essentially pick my champions and what relics I was using. Often my chat was obviously counter picking me or making me waste runs as you see using Aurelian Soul for challenge one, not advised. So don't go by what I have actually chosen because most of those probably are not going to be a good decision. Also note that while I'm going to be suggesting champions for most of the challenges, if you just pick a solid champion into them, you can kind of ignore most of the modifiers. So even if you don't have one of the champions I suggest, as long as you're not counterpicking yourself, you'll normally be fine. Now with that out of the way, let's get into it. So up first, challenge one, just up against Jin. We have arms race, game start, all players summon to funsmiths. So all of your spells and skills deal one extra damage. Now this is one where Annie and Jin and also Misfortune are all really solid here. Annie and Jin are probably too strong. You wanna save them for later. You maybe want to consider using Misfortune just because this will really increase the damage of your skills because all your skills only deal one damage. So you're essentially tripling their damage since you're going to have two Funsmiths increasing that for you. Next up then, challenge two, one star up against Zoe. We have Dune Striders. Each round the player's first Shirima card costs one less and Wailing Spirits. So your first Shadow Isles card also costs one less. So here, pretty straightforward. Just go ahead and use any of your Shirima or Shadow Isles champion. This is actually pretty nice because those regions do tend to have some of the weaker champions. So this is a great time to break out some of those and give them a little bit boost so they're a bit stronger. So going for someone like maybe Nasus for Shirima, maybe Kaisa, or you go for someone like Thresh or maybe Kindred, but probably use some of your weaker champions right here for this one. Challenge three, two stars up against Viego as well as Ash. Special modifiers embrace the current. When the player plays a spell, they refill one spell mana. Really good for Nami because this will double up with your star power. That's essentially the exact same thing. So every time you play a spell, you're now refilling two spell mana. So you can pretty much go infinite with your spells as long as you keep having more to generate. Also really good for Master Yi. Also lets you go infinite as long as you unlock the hero's horn on your champion spell. So really good for both of them. But then it's also solid for just any of the spells based decks challenge for one star we have gangplank with savage mysticism round start each player gets a mana gem this can really help you ramp up a lot quicker so it can be good for again some of your weaker slow champions so it could be solid for like orn or nasus again nasus especially can be really good into gangplank because you can kill those barrels and get some free scaling off right there maybe also want to go for someone like thresh really use this as an opportunity to try to use some of your weaker champions so you're not wasting runs on some of your more stronger units. Challenge five though, we have two stars, Lulu as well as Fiora. Important thing to note here, Lulu has the power of Adorbis, so every round she silences your strongest unit and turns it into a 1-1 squirrel, so be aware of that. Now that does only affect followers, so champions will be fine. And then you have Fiora, which always she's going to be trying to challenge and kill your units, so probably try to stay away from really weak decks that aren't going to be able to deal with Fiora. But the special rules here, repetition when any player plays a spell, they copy it with the same targets. And then beyond mere flesh, the foes units have 1-1 one, one for each of their keywords. Now this one will be a little bit more challenging for Fiora because she's giving a lot of her units challenger. And then when they challenge you, they also get tough. So Fiora's units are going to be pretty strong so definitely be aware of that but repetition this will be really good for you the enemy doesn't use that many spells so you don't necessarily have to worry about their spells getting doubled but you can double up all your spells so obviously great for all of those spells based decks and especially good for vagar you can really use his free darkness spells to just try to annihilate all of the enemy board and then end the game so this is one that you definitely need to be aware of what the enemy is doing but the repetition, as long as you utilize this, you should be able to win fairly easily. Now, challenge six, just up against Fiora, two stars. Minimalist, great power at game start. The player starts with two extra mana gems, but they don't get any more at round start. Now, if you're using something like Starforge Gauntlets or Nora's Epic Relic, those will actually activate, so you can get extra mana gems that way. 
Also, if you're playing a champion that can get mana gems, such as like Lux, Set, Elder Dragon, those can also trigger as well. So it's not like you can't get more mana gems, you're just not getting one at round start. But a really solid power, you want to utilize this and put the pressure on the enemy early, because otherwise they're going to keep getting stronger because they are still getting mana every round. But you're just going to be pretty much staying the same for most champions. So some champions like Samira, that can really put a ton of pressure on early, and they have some cost reduction, they have a really cheap deck, they are really great here, but you can really play any champion here, because even the ones you might think would be terrible, such as like Orn, that have champions that are above like that four cost as far as mana, normally you have ways to bump up your mana if you want to go for that. In general though, champions that have a lot of cheap decks, such as Samira, really good here. Unstable technology though, grant a random keyword to the first unit the foe summons each round. Really random, not really much you can do about this. Just hope the enemy doesn't get like elusive or lifesteal and just be sure you're not counterpicking yourself and you don't have a plan to deal with their Fiora, but you should be able to rush down the enemy pretty quickly with this minimalist power. Challenge 7, 1 star just against Sejuani and Fiora and Zoe. So we have Celestial Guidance, your Targon card costs 1 less. Now most of the Targon champions are, actually really all of them, are kind of too powerful to use here. That being Aurelian Soul, Diana, Leona, and Morgana. So if you have any of them at a really low level, then maybe you'd want to break them out here, but honestly, probably too strong to play here. Maybe Leona, but even then, she is a really powerful champion, so you might not want to go for this one. Granted, they do have Undying Rage each round the first time they would die. Grant them Tough, Overwhelm, and Fearsome instead. So you'd maybe want to play Leona to mitigate this power, but this would also be a solid time just to go for a champion that has a large amount of removal just to be consistently taking out the enemy targets. So you could go for someone like Kindred where you can kill the enemy and also mark them, or you could just go the route of controlling the enemy board so you don't even have to kill them. You just make their units useless, so maybe going for someone like Ash or Yasuo. Granted, I normally tend to save my Yasuo till later on, but Ash could actually be pretty solid here. Or you could also just go the route of trying to overwhelm the enemy and end the game in the first round or two. That way they're not getting a lot of benefit from the Undying Rage. So you could also go for someone like Gnar or Misfortune because both of them can be very aggressive and actually very strong in these early challenges where the enemy has a smaller nexus health as well as limited starting mana. Next up then, we have challenge 8, 2 stars up against Viego. We have Price of Progress, the player's spells cost 2 less, their units cost 1 more, and nothing but Powder Monkeys, round start. If the foe has the attack token, they summon a Powder Monkey, so they're just getting some free units every round. And then also since they're Viego, if you have any units die, they again get another free unit at the start of the round. So you could go for someone such as like Nasus or Volibear, where you can just scale, or I guess also Kane, scale off of killing these Powder Monkeys and any other units they summon, because they're normally pretty weak, and just try to take their free units to your advantage. Price of Progress though, this can be really good for Master Yi, because a lot of your spells you can then play for free. Also good for Janna because you can get some cost reduction going, getting all of your spells down as well. Probably want to avoid champions though where you're having a lot of your units die just so you're not feeding that into Viego. So ones like Gwen, Misfortune, Evelyn, potentially Poro King, probably want to avoid champions like that. Now challenge 9, 2 stars, we have Lee Sin as well as Caitlyn. No looking back, this not worth playing around. And Chilling Prophecy, again not really worth playing around. Game start, the foe summons a frozen thrall, sets countdown to five. So just try to end before countdown five and just probably ignore both of these, to be honest. So a very broad one, just pick any real solid champion. Again, I do actually really like both Misfortune and Gnar for these lower challenges. While many people consider them kind of weaker champions, they can definitely dominate at these lower challenge ranges and they feel very strong down here. Next up, challenge 10, just one star against Ezreal as well as Jin. So we have Dutiful Service, so each round the player's first Demacia card costs one less to play. And Battlefield Training, round start, grant the foe's weakest unit, 1-1. One, one. Now, all of the Demacia champions are actually very powerful. And so since this is just a one star, you probably just want to pick whatever one you have that the lowest level, as long as they're still strong enough to complete an adventure. So the Demacia champions, Vayne, Garen, and Lux, they're all very close in power. So definitely don't break out your best one here. 
if you have all three probably just pick your weakest and that'd be the best for this one challenge 11 two stars fiora as well as talia we have on guard round start create a fleeting single combat not player's hands so you see that right here essentially garen's second star power dutiful service again so same effect as the last challenge fortifications the foe's nexus is tough so it's going to take one less damage from all sources and then mush when the foe attacks they summon a attacking random one cost poro now one thing to note with whenever you have on guard you normally want to be playing chicken with the enemy and make them use it first because what will happen is if you try to use on guard and you try to have one of your units strike the enemy units they will then cast their single combat making it so that unit you're trying to kill will then target one of your other weaker cards and try to just make a better trade so normally you want to flip that on the enemy and not really use your single combat until the enemy tries to use theirs and then you can either try to buff up your unit so it is going to get the kill or you just have the unit they are trying to kill single combats a different unit on their board to make a better trade so normally this is something that you only want to be using to counter the enemy and if you try to use it first they will then cast theirs to try to get a better trade so always be aware of that now that being said you don't really need to use garen here because since you're already getting a single combat you're not gonna have the mana to cast two in a round in most situations this is actually one where i think kane would be pretty solid because with Kane and the single combat, you can really use this to get a lot of kills and scale up your unit. So that's a very strong. And be aware, these single combats, they are going to cost two mana. So try to make sure you have the mana for it. But if you see the enemy doesn't have that two mana, you then know that, okay, you can cast your single combat and they can't counter with their own. With Kane, I think you maybe have one or two Demacia cards. So you might get some benefit from this, but you're really choosing Kane for the other modifiers, specifically the on guard as well as the mush so when the foe attacks is someone that you're attacking random one cost poro that's going to be very easy for you to kill and scale up your units with so i think both of these make it very good for kane and then the fortifications the enemy's nexus is tough doesn't really matter that much because normally with kane you're doing a lot of big hits whereas tough is a lot better for mitigating small damage but all your units with big hits will really be able to punch through and do a lot of damage here so this is one that i think kane would be great for Challenge 12, three stars. We have Fizz, Arcane Emissions. All players start with three spell mana. This is one that's always great for your Nidalee because then you don't have to grab Lost Chapter on her. That being said, Nidalee's kind of too powerful for this challenge. We also have Age of Conquest. When the foe's units attack, grant their strongest attacking unit to power. Little rough, but at least this is the lower level version of it. So they're not getting like four power and overwhelm. So you can still block them out. This is a very broad challenge. And you can really pick anyone here. Just be aware you are going to deal with Fizz. They can put a lot of pressure on you early. So just go in with a plan for that. But this is a very broad challenge that really isn't pushing you in any one direction. At least not in my opinion. Challenge 13, two stars. We have Aurelia as well as Gangplank. Now, just when you see these two champions, you should immediately be thinking Kane, Nasus, and Volibear. Both these units, they're summoning a lot of easy units for you to kill. So the blades for Aurelia and then the barrels for Gangplank. So you can really turn that to your advantage. So there's some bosses that when you see them, you should immediately be thinking about the champions that are countering them and not even necessarily looking at the rules, at least not initially. So just know right away, Kane, Nasus, and Volibear all could be very solid here just because they counter these cha champions. Now for the special rules, we do have Breakthrough Research. So each round the player's first P and Z card costs one less to play. This is really good for Janna because all of her star powers revolve around playing cost reduced cards. And with this, you're getting a free cost reduced card every single round. Really big right there. Hard Fought Heist. Round start, the foe has a 50% chance to create a lucky find in hand and the player has a 25%. So that lucky find, fleeting card that you can just buff up one of your units with a random assortment of buffs so the enemy is going to be getting these much more often than you and you'll be getting them every once in a while overall not really that big of a deal just try to take out enemy targets especially if they're starting to stockpile a lot of the buffs on them try to kill their bigger unit every once in a while if possible so again you could go for the janna but i would really go for again kane nasus or volibear just because they would do great for countering these now challenge 14 we have two stars just against misfortune 
unnatural selection of players units have evolve and endure when the foe summons a unit granted 1-1. Now for the evolve, this can be really good for your Poro King because you can trigger it pretty easily. Solid for Evelyn, even though again, she's probably pretty strong for this level of challenge. Also can be quite good for your Elise based on the build you're able to do with her. Overall though, these are some pretty broad modifiers. Yes, you can try to play into the unnatural selection, but normally you'll be able to trigger this on most champions throughout the course of a run. So this is another pretty broad one. You can choose a lot of different people here. Challenge 15, we have three stars, Victor, as well as Darius. We have forced workout. All units have strike, build my power and Noxian Might each round the first time the foe summons unit granted two power, which is then gonna be a bit rough because that unit is then gonna have a higher power to get doubled. So while the forest workout is very strong, you will have to watch out for the enemy. Probably a time to break out some of your champions that could potentially end in a single round. So maybe go for like Jax, as they could probably just one shot the enemy. But again, you could also, if you wanted to save Jax for some higher challenges, Go for some of those champions that are aggressive early and have pretty wide boards. So again, both Nar and Misfortune. Great in the lower level challenges, able to put a lot of pressure on the enemy. Also can be a good one for Ash because you can just frostbite the enemy so they can't get any strikes off, so they can't double their power. I often struggle when I'm playing to find spots to really play Ash. I think this would actually be a good one if you're wanting to not be as aggressive and want to more focus on countering the enemy. Now, challenge 16, two stars just against Caitlyn. Tranquil Minds, your first Ionia card costs one less. And Hardy Feast, the foes units have tough. So for the Tranquil Minds, Set, Lee Sin, Master Yi, as well as Yasuo. Now, Yasuo, you probably want to save for some tougher challenges, but this would be a great time to break out, especially your Lee Sin. I find Lee Sin normally is not the best so trying to use some runs for him in the first group of challenges could be pretty good so he would probably be my go-to here but again you could really play any of the ionia champions hardy feast the foes units having tough bit annoying but won't really counter your Lee Sin or really any of the ionia champions too much it would counter someone like jinx or jack but not really playing those here challenge 17 one star fizz as well as Jin. so we have forced workout again all units have strike delve my power and natural talent game start the foe starts with three spell mana will be pretty annoying especially for that fizz and fizz can be pretty deadly with that forest workout because they have a lot of elusives that can just sneak by and even though they have small power initially them getting multiple strikes off can really wear you down so i would say go into this one with a champion that has some decent removal just to try to kill the enemy targets especially fizz and his units because they all are very weak as far as health so potentially going for someone like Jack, if you have him at three stars, where you can just refill your mana and ping the entire enemy board for damage, that'd be really good because his Fizz couldn't get out of those because they're not spells actually targeting him. So that would be pretty solid. Could also try to go for someone like Misfortune, again, having a lot of damage to ping the enemy board. So this one is just a one star, but it can actually be a bit more deadly so give this one the proper respect you don't have to go crazy with your champion selection but don't underestimate this one now challenge 18 we have three stars with both swain and katarina we have animated armor all units have formidable and distracting melody round start a random card in the player's hand costs two more this round the formidable that makes you use your health instead of your power when you strike now this would be a solid one for Tom Kench because he can really scale up off of a lot of the enemy damage. And you could also throw like regen on him. Could also be really decent for Kane because Kane, a lot of his units actually have a very high health pool. And when your units kill enemy units, they can heal back to full. So Kane, always solid here. And then Vagar would again be really good just because you have so much free removal. Now note that since you're gonna be using your health for when you strike, you're often going to be taking a lot of damage. Both of these champions have poke damage and Swain is going to deal three damage to all of your damaged units because that is just his champion power. So do be aware of that. One good thing to note is for Caitlyn, most of her units actually have a much higher attack stat than they do a health stat. So their units will actually be fairly weak 
But again, try to kill their Katarina, otherwise she's just going to scale up and keep rallying over and over again. All right, challenge 19, two stars, Lulu as well as Sejuani. We have Tranquil Mines. Each round the player's first Ionia card costs one less to play. So again, set, Lee Sin, Master Yi, or Yasuo. Probably, again, don't want to use your Yasuo for this low of one. Lee Sin, probably be solid here. Waters Flow, when the foe plays a spell, grant its weakest unit 1-1. One, one. That will be a bit annoying, but not too bad. Again, remember, Lulu is going to silence your strongest unit or strongest follower every round. And Sejuani's units all are a little bit stronger because of her power. So bear that in mind. Again, Lee Sin should be fine here, just so you can try to use a run with him early. But again, look at your roster. If you have some other Ionia champions that are a bit weaker because you don't have them leveled up, don't have star powers on them, you might want to use them here as well. Challenge 20, three stars up against Gangplank. Again, remember with Gangplank, Kane, Nasus, or Volibear, all really good for just killing his barrels and scaling off of them. We have Fighting Frenzy. The player's units have 2-2. Two, two. Round end, deal two damage to all the player's units. Also really good for Tom Kench. This can help you scale up and you can scale off of Gangplank's poke damage. We also have incapacitation. The player's damaged units can't block. So this one, a little tough because your units are going to be damaged by the frenzied fighting. So you need to try to be very aggressive here and just use these extra stats to your advantage. Always be trying to take out the enemy units as much as possible so that they don't have units to attack with. So even though you can't block, it's not that big of a deal. Again, Kane, Nasus, or Volibear can be solid here. Tom Kench also could be pretty solid. And you could also go for someone like Garen, where he's able to scale up his units. And since you have a single combat every round, you can continually take out enemy targets, even if you can't block. 21, three stars, we have Victor. Blinking Flames, all spells and skills deal one extra damage. Again, great for Misfortune, Annie, and Jin. Survival of the Fittest, round start, obliterate the foe's weakest unit to grant double its stats to the foe's strongest. So this is really one where you want to be clearing out the enemy board as much as possible because you don't want them to have like a elusive unit that is suddenly buffed up and absolutely crazy. So just try to be aware of the enemy board. Look at what their strongest and weakest units are so you can see what stats are going to get doubled and put onto the other unit and just try to stop any overly powerful combinations you see happening. And if you can keep them to just having even just one unit on the board, then they won't have this power really going off at all. Normally, it's not too difficult. You just have to be mindful of it, because if you don't pay attention, this can surprise you and just annihilate you in like a single turn. But again, Annie would be really solid here, as well as Jin, and even someone like Misfortune would be solid as well. Now, challenge 22, two stars. We have Fiora as well as Viego with the special rules, Mountain Peak, Game Start the Foe, summons a Targon's Peak, Round End, all players draw one. So you see right here, reduce the cost of a random card in all players' hands to zero this round. Now this one, pretty random. I normally don't try to play around it. I know some people like to go for their really big champions, such as like Orn or Nasus, and hope that those champions get down to zero so they can play them for free. For me, how I play, I just try to be mindful that this effect is going to be going off, and the enemy might get some big units that can play early, but I normally don't try to pick an expensive champion and hope that I just get this to proc perfectly. Now, they also have Raiding Party. When a foe damages the player's nexus, grant the top unit in, those, in the foe's deck 1-1. One, one. So just try to keep them from hitting your nexus. Overall, this is a pretty broad one. So pick just a solid champion that's going to be able to deal with Fiora as well as Viego. First champion that comes to mind would be Garen. Normally, you don't have any units die with Garen, or it's pretty rare. And so you're not going to be feeding free units to Viego. You have a lot of great removal. You have that single combat every single round, so you can really shut down Fiora as well as Viego with that. And then with the free cost reduction, you do have some big units like Garen that if they got hit with the zero cost would be pretty helpful. But again, you're not relying on that to win. Challenge 23, three stars up against Zed. So we have Celestial Guidance. So first Targon card costs one less to play. Now this is a three star. So if you have some of your Targon champions that they are solid, but they're not quite top tier yet, you might want to pull them out here. Again, though, all the Targon champions are really strong. So you might again want to save them for later. And then the Pilfered Provi Provisions. Game start, the foe summons a Warlord's Palace. When the foe's Warlord Palace counts down to zero, they steal a Mana Gem from the player and they summon another one. So that Warlord's Palace, count down eight, create a Relic of Power in hand. 
when you target allies advance me one so they're going to be trying to count this down if they're able to do that they're going to be stealing mana from you normally they'll end up stealing like one mana before the game is over but this is kind of just putting a timer on your game you want to try to end fairly quickly otherwise the enemy is just going to keep stealing all your mana now when this counts down they get like relic of power so they can either predict and draw one summon a sandstone charger which you see right here or grant all allies one power again pretty broad one that you can just mostly ignore these powers and just focus on the fact that it's zed so go into a plan with shutting him down whether that is through controlling him with some frostbites or stuns or some removal just to take him off the board as soon as they play him really focus more on zed than the powers here 24 four stars we have jinx as well as draven mortal marks when any player summons a unit set its health to one so your power isn't being affected and this is affecting the enemy as well so being able to ping the enemy board for damage such as like jack if you have him at your third star power really good right here misfortune as well being able to ping the enemy board you might want to run like grand general's counter plan on her just so you can always have a make it rain to hit the enemy board then we have the vicious enemy 10 nexus health starting mana and hand size and remove the imperfection when the foe summons a unit recall one of the player's followers with less power than it so if they're able to summon bigger units than you they will start recalling them so just be aware of that now the mortal marks is a little bit rough based on the enemies we're going up against draven he's able to do these big attacks with a lot of power behind it and overwhelm units so if you don't have big blockers that can really be a problem and then jinx when her units attack they also play a super mega death rocket that hits your whole board for one damage so this one will be pretty tough definitely try to go for some of those champions that i mentioned such as like jack or misfortune be able to ping the enemy board for damage so that you can kill them before they're able to get these attacks off and really give you a bad time challenge 25 two stars up against azir price of progress the player spells cost two less their units cost one more pretty solid for all of these spells based champions really good for Yi as you can potentially go infinite with this and also solid for Janna as you're getting some more cost reduction which triggers all of her star powers and strength and swiftness the foes units have quick attack pretty deadly because you have Azir it is just a two star though so it won't be too crazy they won't have as high of a starting mana as well as Nexus health but try to end the game in the first couple of rounds otherwise Azir will likely rush you down granted with these modifiers especially if you go for someone like Master Yi shouldn't have any trouble because you can potentially end in the very first couple rounds 26 two stars we have Tom Kench with forced workout again all units have striked all my power and strike the set so when the foe attacks stun the player's weakest unit now for the forest workout all of your old gale force champions are really good for this because they can normally just end the game round one so diana jack elise all can be very solid here now they're all very powerful so sometimes you want to save them for a higher challenge but if you want to just get this over in like a single round all of them will be great here and yes you can actually use gale force because normally with those back-to-back -back attacks you'll just end the game before your unit gets recalled but do be aware that they are just going to be stunning you when they attack so if you can try to keep them from attacking that's great because this isn't just like stunning you at the start of the round so it does give you a little bit more wiggle room here if you're not trying to end round one though definitely just be careful don't let the enemy get too many strikes off and start scaling their side of the board challenge 27 though three stars we have ezreal with butcher's block and adorbis so this is the lulu power round start transform the player's strongest follower always remember that not gonna affect your champions and make it a 1-1 squirrel and then all units have plunder now the plunder here not gonna make that much a difference for you or the enemy the adorbis though this will be rough into ezreal because your unit's going to go to a 1-1 squirrel. Ezreal's generating free spells every round, so he can just immediately hit your unit with a static shock and kill them. Probably want to move away from a follower-focused deck and move more towards a champion-focused deck, or just go for a deck where you have so many units on the board that it doesn't really matter. So again, someone like Misfortune or Thresh even, Kindred, a lot of these decks that normally have pretty wide boards and having one of their units get silenced every round, not really a big deal but just be aware of the deadly combo between adorbis and ezreal that's the biggest thing to be aware of for this challenge now 28 two stars we have lulu so again they're having that same adorbis power we have bandle magic game start the foe summons a bandle tree so if you want to win from this you could go for like evelyn nora or poro king those are generally the best if you want to try to win from this 
normally it's not worth the effort there's also summoning the arena so the strongest enemy unit is going to strike your weakest unit now you can try to turn this to your advantage as long as your weakest unit is stronger than their strongest you can try to take out enemy targets that being said that will be pretty difficult with lulu because she's gonna be turning your units into those one one squirrels so they're probably going to be killing those squirrels every single round. Normally for Lulu, I find just to have a champion with a lot of removal is a great way to deal with her. So we're actually going for someone like Garen or Kane. We have a lot of units on the board. You can block and kill anything she tries to throw at you. And then you also have some tools like single combat just to kill the enemy units. And so even though your units getting transformed into a squirrel is annoying, you normally have enough other big units that it's not really an issue. Challenge 29 though, two stars up against Caitlyn and Zoe. So we have crafty portals each round the player's first Bandle City card, costs one less to play. So the Bandle City champions, Nora, Timo, Vagar, Nar, Yumi, those are all the ones that'll get the benefit from this. Flash of Steel though, round start, stun the player's strongest unit. So this one, you have to go for a pretty wide board. You can't just focus on having a couple strong units because the enemy will really punish you. So potentially you want to stay away from maybe someone like Yumi, as sometimes she can have a pretty narrow board. But going for someone like Vagar, where you don't really care if your strongest unit gets stunned necessarily, and you're just focusing on your darkness. Or you can go for someone like Nar or Nora, where normally they have a pretty wide board. Also can be fine for Teemo as well. Be aware though, Teemo's probably not the best choice here because they have Zoe, so they're gonna have blockers for you. And then Caitlyn also has a lot of removal. Now, challenge 30, three stars up against Zed. We have Frenzied Fighting, the player's units have 2-2. Two, two. Round end deal two to all the player's units and Embrace the Shadows, the foe's attacking units have one power. Also remember Zed's intrinsic power that he has is that if your Nexus takes any damage, his strongest unit strikes it. Now, Frenzied Fighting, this is one that you can try to turn to your advantage. Pretty good for some ones like Darius, Garen, Kane, Tom Kench. Most of those you can either end the game very quickly or you have other ways to scale to somewhat offset the damage you're taking at the end of the round. Really though, this is a Zed matchup. So just try to go into it, making sure you have a plan to kill Zed. And as long as you can kill Zed, you're normally gonna have a pretty easy time. 31, three stars, we have Misfortune. Mortal Marks, when any player summons a unit that sets health to one. Misfortune has a lot of ways to hit your board with damage, so this can be a little rough. Again, though, since this is also affecting the enemy, you can do the exact same thing to them and play your own Misfortune or play like a Jack if you have met three stars. We also have Chorus of Power, round start. The foe gets an extra mana in this round for each unit they have, so you really want to be sure you're just destroying the entire enemy board. Again, Jack, really good for Mortal Marks. Misfortune, also solid. Could always play Jinx, but again, that'd probably be a little overkill. 32, two stars, we have Lee Sin. Repetition, when any player plays a spell, they copy it with the same targets. Now this actually will be rough because Lee Sin plays spells. He plays a lot of spells. When he attacks, he summons his strike. That is a zero cost that gives one of his units two power. Well, now he can play those twice. They're gonna go off twice, leveling up their Lee Sin really quickly. Often the trick you can do for Lee Sin is when he attacks, if you don't block and don't play anything, you say skip block, he then doesn't get the chance to play those spells. So he'll hit you, but normally it's actually less damage than if you try to block, because then he has the chance to buff up all of his units. So this one will actually be pretty rough and small stuff when the player summons a unit sets health to 1-1. One, one. So this is definitely worse because this is only affecting you and the enemy is also gonna get these buffs. Now this can be decent, for like Vagar, is you don't rely on your unit stats as much, and you can just use your darkness to try to kill anything the enemy plays. Same for some other spells-based champions, such as like Annie, or potentially Jin. Jin especially can try to scale up his units every time they play a skill. So you can try to offset the small stuff there. Can also try to go for some of the champions that have a lot of spells, such as like Master Yi, where even though your units are 1-1, one, one, you might be able to really buff them up, especially if you have that one epic, the secret technique, where all your units get twice the amount of stats from spells. So you really can try to lean into the repetition to save you here, but do know this is going to be a pretty deadly one. Now, 33, three stars, we have Azir, Arcane Emission, Game Start, all players start with three spell mana, and Chorus of Power again, so the focus and extra mana gem for each unit they have. So you really want to be killing the enemy board as much as possible. Now again, Arcane Emissions is pretty good for Nidalee, because then you don't have to run your 
lost chapter on her and you put a different relic on there instead Nidalee would be great if you just wanted to blast through this challenge and in like a single round if not though you could go for some champions to just have a large amount of removal so ones like kindred annie volley bear would actually be solid here because you could potentially scale up off of a lot of the enemy kills and because the arcane emissions you could play your avalanche round one just removal is really going to be the name of the game you want to kill their azir and kill anything they have on their board now 34 three stars up against aurelia we have animated armor so again all units have formidable and remove the imperfection when the foe summons a unit recall one of the player's followers with less power than it so again this can only affect followers so vagar isn't a terrible option here as vagar himself can't get recalled but with all of his darkness spells he can be good for taking out the enemy units Kane also solid with all of their blades your units can really scale up off of these and just definitely overwhelm the enemy really Kane would be my go-to for this challenge 35 four stars up against Zed as well as Kaisa so we get no looking back not really worth playing around and then vicious enemy and let's rock so round start the foe summons a rock fall path if they don't have one so that right here countdown to obliterate the weakest enemy so they're just getting free removal every single round really pay attention to this as if you don't pay attention and it surprises you it'll just cost you the game you always have to try to have some small unit to take the hit for you this one will actually be pretty rough it's not only a four star they have the vicious enemy and we don't really have any powers to help us here also zed can definitely be pretty deadly and kaisa even when she starts off with a large amount of mana can be pretty deadly so this is one of the times for you to just break out one of your stronger champions whether that is leblanc jinx aurelian soul nidalee diana you really just want to drop one of your strong champions to take out the enemy and end this game as fast as possible challenge 36 so we have three stars just against swain they get the adorbis again and tranquil minds so your first ionia card costs one less to play now this might be the time to start breaking out your yasuo it is three stars and the adorbis while annoying this isn't going to affect your yasuo because he's not a follower also would be okay for master yi i normally save him for some of the more spells based decks but since that is a very champion focused deck he can also be a decent answer to the adorbis and then set is also pretty solid and since you normally have a full board with set the adorbis again won't hurt you quite as bad 37 two stars we have lee sin with power of observation so game start all players summon a hex tech observatory so you see that right here each round the first time you play a spell refill mana equal to its cost essentially lux's star powers and then welcome to the murder bridge so game start the foe summons a howling abyss so create in hand a random level two champion that's not in hand deck or play so you would want to play a champion that has a solid amount of spells because you'd want to play one spell every single round because you can essentially play that spell for free now you don't want to play lux here because you're essentially just duplicating your star powers which often does absolutely nothing for you but you'd also want to probably kill that howling abyss so you could play kindred Kindred does have a decent amount of spells as well as spells to destroy this landmark. So Kindred would be a solid option here. Now you could actually play Lee Sin here. The new spell they added, his Unworthy Soul, is able to recall landmarks. So you could recall this since it is a spell. Even though it's expensive, you could try to play it pretty early because you get it refunded. And so you could recall this landmark to their hand and make them at least pay the six mana to try to play it again. And you're still winning that trade because the spell you're playing it's either going to cost you three to five mana and so regardless you're still winning that trade so lee sin actually is a option here kindred is probably the best though now talia you don't have as many spells so you're not going to benefit from the power of observation as much but you do have ways to destroy enemy landmarks so that is also pretty solid that being said though these are some pretty general powers and this is just a two star so you can be actually pretty broad with who you select here 38 though two stars we have misfortune as well as Jin. so we have unflinching strength your first noxus card costs one less to play now most of the noxus champions are probably too strong to use here especially like annie and samira but you could potentially pull out your darius here or your mordekaiser the enemy also has nature's revenge when the foe gains the attack token they summon a sapling so you see that right here don't play 
any small units that are going to be susceptible to this challenger so if you want to benefit from the unflinching strength mordekaiser or maybe darius would probably be the best option here but you can again always try to go for one of the champions that scales off of enemy kills such as nasus kane or volley bear because they're going to have these small saplings you can kill and then also Misfortune normally has a lot of small units. So again, you could use any of them here as well. Now, 39, we have four stars with Lingering Shadows. When a unit dies, grant a random unit in that player's hand 1-1. One, one. Not that big of a deal most of the time, but can be nice, especially if you're playing like a Shadow Isles deck, such as like Thresh, but Vicious Enemy, making everything a little bit harder for you. And Round Start, the foe summons a Powder Monkey. So they're going to be getting a decent amount of benefit from that Lingering Shadows. And they're going to be doing a little bit of damage to you every round. Now, this one is actually fairly rough. Again, Kaisa with a higher starting mana is actually fairly annoying. So this is probably a time to pull out one of your champions that maybe isn't the top tier, but just like a tier below, like a solid A tier champion here. Again, you could potentially pull out like your Volley Bear and just scale off of the kills here. If you have Volley Bear with a couple epic relics, he would be able to do great here. But someone like a Alawi, Gwen, Garen, Lux, just any of those strong champions that maybe aren't the top tier but are really decent, this is probably time when you want to break out one of them. Now, challenge 40, three stars. We have Fizz as well as Victor. Trick of the Light, game start all players, summon a Mirror Mage. So when you play a created follower, summon an exact copy. When you play a created spell, copy with the same target. So really benefiting just any created cards. I normally like to play this one with Echo because he also has a lot of synergy with created cards. So he's normally my pick here. Now we have the Iterative Enhancement, round start the foe summons the next turret. So they're just getting free units every round and eventually start summoning an 8-8 T-Hex if you take too long. So really putting a timer on your game. Now you can try to benefit this a bit with someone like, again, your Nasus Kane or Volley Bear, but it is gonna definitely get harder every round as the turrets just keep getting stronger and stronger. Echo though, solid choice if you want to try to benefit from your Trick of the Light. But note that both of these decks you're going against are gonna have a lot of created cards. So try to kill the enemy Mirror Mage as soon as possible. Maybe even go for someone if you want like Annie, where you have some decent amount of created cards, same with your Jin, but you also have a large amount of removal, just try to take out enemy targets, especially their Mirror Mage. Now, 41, three stars, Azir and Katarina, so both very early aggressive units. They get game start, the foe gets an extra mana gem, so they're even stronger. But you get frenzied fighting, the players just have 2 2, round end deal 2 to all the players' units. So try to be very aggressive and just take down the enemy as fast as possible. So if you have like a three star Darius, he could be pretty solid here. Could also go for like Kane, Garen, or Tom. All those more brawlery bruiser champions, really good for the frenzied fighting. Just try to end the game as fast as possible and focus on killing their Katarina as well as their Azir. 42, three stars against Lee Sin. Forced workout yet again, all units have strike though my power. So going for all the old Gale Force champions, so Elise, Jax, Diana, or potentially going for like one of the newer champions, such as like Nidalee, they would also be really solid here for just trying to end the game as fast as possible. Now you can also just go for some of the units that have really wide boards, like especially like Nora, where you have some elusives in there. That would also be very solid. The enemy also has withstand though, so round start, grant the foes units plus one health. Now, the forest workout will be a little rough for Lee Sin. Again, you might want to do the strategy of when they attack, just not playing anything and skipping the block. That way he can't buff up his units with the spells he generates when he attacks. Because if he does buff them up and then they get a hit, their stats will be buffed or doubled from that buff state. So they're essentially getting more value from this than they normally would. So that is one thing to definitely be aware of with this challenge. Next up, 43, three stars. We have Lulu as well as Azir. Fortifying Frost, so your first Freljord card costs one less. So the Freljord champions, Ash, Volley Bear, Orn, and Nar. We also have Noxian Might, so each round, the first time the foe summons a unit, granted four power and overwhelm. Pretty rough power, putting a lot of pressure on you early. Also really deadly with their Azir especially. Remember, their Lulu is gonna have that Adorbus power but Azir will really be the issue here. Now, while you could go for someone like Ash, I think she'll probably get rushed down a little bit too quickly here. If you have a maxed out Volley Bear, he would be pretty solid. And then if you're feeling lucky, you could go for your Orn or 
Gnar, but this might just be a time where you want to ignore the Fortifying Frost and just go for some stronger champions. Yasuo could be solid here to keep the enemies from really being able to attack. Morgana, again, solid. Really, I think any of the control decks that also have a decent amount of removal, so like Annie, Jin, potentially even Leona, could be pretty decent here. But this could also be a time to break out some of your stronger champions just to rush this one down. So potentially even going for someone like Nami, if again you have her leveled up. She's normally able to end games incredibly quickly. Just this is one that will be pretty rough, and while some of the Freljord champions can deal with this, this might bait you into playing to someone that's a little bit too weak. Now, 44, three stars up against Tom Kench, Celestial Guys, and Noxian Might. So we've seen both of these. Like, we just saw this one in the last challenge, and we've seen this one plenty of times. Now, we're at challenge 44, so it might be time to start breaking out your Targon champions. Granted, again, most of them are, like, S tier. But this can work for, like, Yumi, can also work for Leona. But the Noxian Might is pretty deadly, is really going to be hurting you, so be on the lookout for that. Now, Tom Kench is definitely a bit slower than their Azir, so maybe pulling out your Ash for this one to be frostbiting their units wouldn't be too bad. But definitely controlling the enemy board and making sure they can't get these strikes off, because you're normally going to struggle to block these units that have that 4 power plus Overwhelm. So just making so they can't get their strikes off at all, it's normally a good way to go. Now, 45, 3 stars up against Misfortune. We have Dune Strider, so all your Shurima cards get cost reduction. And calling for aid at the start of round 7, the foe summons a random level 2 champion. You should be ending before this goes off. So this one shouldn't really be a issue for you. Now this is just a 3 star, but they don't have really any terrible modifiers. So this can be a chance for you to break out some of your Shurima champions that still might be a little bit on the weaker side. So you can potentially pull out your Nasus or Kaisa or Talia. Probably want to save your Nidli as she's normally a little bit too strong for this type of challenge. 46, three stars. We have Gangplank with the Minimalist. So we've already touched on this one before. But just remember, you can still get mana gems. You just don't get a new one at the start of the round. Really good for champions that have very cheap decks where you can just rush down the enemy very quickly. Samir is kind of the best in my opinion or at least the best example of that type of champion but you can even go for some champions that have like four cost champions such as like allow or gwen and try to get them on the board and rush the enemy down very quickly now little buddies round start the foe summons a random one cost poro absolutely amazing for again those champions i keep talking about nasus kane and Volibear. bear all of them scale off of unit death so when you see really cheap easy units like this those are the champions you should immediately be thinking of. Not saying you have to choose them, but they should be in your thought process as maybe a consideration. Also, the boss we're going against, Gangplank, he's making those barrels. You can kill every round. So those champions will be very solid right here. Now, 47, three stars. We have Caitlyn, Nautical Nuisance, round start, refill all player spell mana. So if you're playing a champion, you normally bring Lost Chapter or Archangel Staff. You don't have to do that here. Really like this one for Lux, actually, because you can then play a six cost spell round one if you use in the Starforge build, which is pretty ridiculous. But also beyond mere flesh, the foes units have one one for each of their keywords. So pretty broad rule set. Just the enemy's units are going to be a little bit stronger. They're going to have a little bit more man to play with, but so will you. I think Lux is a great pickup here, but so are all the champions that just generate spells every round so even going for garen just so you can play your single combat every round not too bad 48 we have four stars with kaisa again bandle magic if you want to win off this one you can go for nora evelyn or poro king those are generally the best but i find it's normally not worth trying to win off that but we have vicious enemy prophet of an elder god and remove the imperfection so making everything harder when they are attacking they're spawning three so they're getting a 3-3 tentacle, or if they have one, they're growing it by 3-3. And remove the imperfection, just recalling your units. This actually is one that it is pretty tough. So if you ever wanted to try to win off Bandle Magic, this is actually a pretty good opportunity for it. So again, you could just play pretty defensively, just be trying to play a follower from a different region every single round. And this actually is a viable strategy for this challenge. So if you don't want to try to win off the Bandle Magic, this is a time to break out one of your pretty strong units. Just whatever S tier champion you have, this is a time to consider using them because this is a pretty rough challenge. 49, three stars. We have Fizz as well as Karma. Chronicle of Ruin, round start, kill all units, then revive them. 
and enemies of Demacia will fall. Game start, the foe summons the Grand Plaza. So you see that right here when allies is summoned, give it 1-1 one, one Challenger. Since they're having the whole board die and then get revived, essentially they're permanently gonna have 1-1 one, one and Challenger, which can be pretty rough. But you can really cheese this one. A great method is going for Guardian Angel as well as Star Gems. So what that does is you have your unit, your champion on the board, they die to Chronicle of Ruin, they get revived because of this effect, but then they also get revived because of the Guardian Angel, and the Star Gems just buff up all of your champions. And so essentially every single round you're getting more copies of your champion, so you're just printing an entire board of your champion. They all have Star Gems, so they're all buffing each other up, and things get pretty ridiculous. Good time to throw this build on Teemo, and he will pretty much wreck anything for you. Challenge 50, getting close to the end. So four stars, we have Ezreal as well as Misfortune. Combat Awareness, all units have Scout, so you and the enemy. And then Sovereign's Domination, so round start. The foe summons an ephemeral copy of the player's strongest follower that died last round. So you want to try to have your units not die, otherwise the enemy is going to get them. Now the combat awareness, this is pretty rough because both Misfortune and Ezreal can really benefit from it. So this is another time where you need to start breaking out your pretty strong champions. Now Elise is actually really good with Scout, and all of your old Gale Force champions, really good here still, so Diana and Jax. Nidley, also very solid. Any of these are ones you might want to consider using here just to try to rush the enemy down and absolutely destroy them, because this is going to be a pretty tough challenge. Now, 51, four stars up against Zir. We have the Vestige of Helia, so all spells cost one less. All units have Spell Shield, and this Spell Shield is permanent. So it's not like units have a Spell Shield you can then pop and then hit them with a spell. Spell Shield is permanent. So any champion that has to rely on targeting enemy units with spells and skills, not going to work here. Now this can be very good for some champions, such as like Master Yi, where getting your spells reduced down is helpful for you, and your spells normally are just buffing up your units, not hurting the enemy. So Master Yi, very good here. Vicious enemy making everything harder for you. Gathering Storm, when the foe attacks, stun the player's weakest unit and draw one. And when the foe attacks, spawn three. So you want to keep the enemy from attacking if you can, because when they attack, both of these effects are going to go off. So Lee Sin is definitely one to consider here, as you could play him. He, remember, he got reduced down to a two cost. You can play him round one and potentially try to just rush down the enemy in the first round or two. Nami is another one you can normally end games very quickly. And although she does have a lot of abilities that can target the enemy, just having the spell go off is still going to buff up your units as long as you have Nami on the board. So she's still also a valid option here. And Morgana is also decent. So Morgana's effects, while the actual effect won't go through if you target the enemy, they'll still get chained from you targeting them. So Morgana can actually kind of go through Spell Shield, and so she can just lock up the enemy board so that they can't attack, which means they can't get these effects off. So that is pretty solid right there. So generally, probably Nami, Morgana, or Master Yi, probably some of the better options to pick here. Now 52, three stars. You have Katarina as well as Karma. Now, Karma is one of those bosses you always have to remember. Her effect is that both you and her start at 10 mana, so really bear that in mind. That can be very important for some of the Chemtech Duplicator champions, such as like Set or Lee Sin are both very powerful with Chemtech Duplicator. Now, the special rules, your Targon cards cost one less, and Big Feast, the enemy's units are a bit stronger. Now, this is just a three-star challenge. They don't have something like the Vicious Enemy, so I think you could potentially get away with someone like Set, as he is very strong and can definitely dominate Karma and could be pretty solid into their Katarina. You have some good crowd control and some ways to deal with her. Could also go for someone such as like Echo. Echo can be very good with starting at 10 mana. He has a lot of very devastating combos, so again, he should be able to deal with the Karma, and he has several different removal spells to try to kill their Katarina right away. So another valid option for you. But if you want to benefit from the Celestial Guidance, potentially go for like Yumi or Leona. Still probably want to hold off on Aurelian Soul or Diana for this one though, in my opinion. 53, three stars. We have Caitlyn as well as Fiora. Natural Magic, all cards cost you less, so yours and the enemies. And then the Iterative Enhancement around start, the foe summons the next turret. Now, Natural Magic, this is one to always be careful of. Don't try to play your more expensive champions thinking like, oh, the cost reduction is going to be great because the enemy is going to be very aggressive because their spells and 
cards are all being reduced down as well. So normally you just need to survive the first round or two. The enemy will often run out of cards. And so if you can just survive the first round or two, then you can normally stabilize and do all right. Now, this can be really good for Janna because all of your cards are now cost reduced. So you're triggering her star powers with every single card you play. So that is actually a decent option here. But again, you could go for some of the champions that just generally have pretty cheap decks and just try to be able to match the enemy's aggression and potentially end the game very quickly. So you can go for some champions such as like Samira, where again, most of their deck is pretty cheap. Master Yi, you can go pretty much infinite. So a pretty fun power, but just be aware the enemy is going to be very aggressive in that first round or two. Now, 54, we have Aurelia as well as Lulu. Remember, Lulu has the Adorbus power to silence your strongest follower every round. Now we have the player's units have Evolve. Really good for Poro King, especially if you have the Spirit of the Boo Epic Relic. Really good right here. Vicious enemy making everything harder and enemies of Demacia will fall. So they get, when an ally summon, give it 1-1 one, one in Challenger this round. Will be pretty annoying, especially for the blades that Aurelia is going to summon. While the Challenger won't matter for them, them just having extra stats will be pretty rough. Again though, Poro King, really good for Evolve, one you might want to consider. Elise can also be really solid here. And Evelyn also would be a great option to benefit and counter these powers as well. Being able to give all your units those additional stats, but then Evelyn can also have just this massive amount of control on the board with leveling up, rally, stunning the whole every the whole enemy board every single round. Another solid option for this one. 55, three stars. We have Misfortune and Fiora. Unnatural selection again, right? I forgot how many times we had this pop up. So all the champions we just mentioned would be pretty solid here. Probably wouldn't want to use your Evelyn though. Probably would be a little bit too easy of a challenge for her. Big Feast though, when the foe summons a unit granted three health. So their units are just going to be a little bit stronger and harder to kill. Definitely can be annoying for Misfortune where you really want to prioritize killing their units. Having some removal that doesn't care about enemy health, such as like Kindred or Annie with her disintegrates can be solid here. But this is a pretty general challenge and honestly fairly easy for this level. So really a chance for you to try to use up some of your slightly weaker champions that aren't up in like the S and A tier and try to use some of those runs to save some of your better champions. 56, three stars. We have Lee Sin, Salty Dogs, and Iterative Enhancement. So your first Bilgewater card is going to cost one less. So that can be like Pike, Alawi, Neela, Tom Kench, all of those will get that cost reduction and iterative enhancements, just the enemy getting free units every single round. And again, really putting a timer on your game. This is a pretty general one though. So really just pick any of your Bilgewater champions that you think is strong enough here. It is just three stars. So even though it's 56, again, fairly easy challenge for this level, especially 57, four stars Yasuo, as well as Fiora. We have Formidable. Undying Rage, Little Buddies, and Vicious Enemy. So this is one where Kane can be pretty decent yet again. Always a solid pickup for Formidable, but then with the Little Buddies, he has the opportunity to try to scale off of these weak enemies. Now the Undying Rage will be pretty annoying, and the fact that the enemy has even more starting hand, nexus health, and starting mana. So you can also try to go for Vagar. He's another great pickup into Formidable. Yet again though, that Undying Rage will be pretty difficult because now you're kind of having to work twice as hard to kill enemy units so it's going to take even more of your darkness spells i think this actually is one where you might want to break out your morgana because morgana can just lock down all of the enemy units and just keep shackling them and then with that lifesteal you can stabilize morgana also has a decent health pool so i think she would be a solid answer here but this also could be a time we just want to break out like leblanc aurelian soul or Jinx. Granted, Jinx will be slightly countered by the tough here, but yeah, this is one of the toughest challenges of this month. 58, three stars. We have Viego as well as Draven. Once again, forced workout. All units have strike down my power and small stuff to really give you a hard time. Now, Nidalee will be a great answer to this because when you use Nidalee and you camouflage her in the bush and then you use your ambush, you actually don't get reset down as much from the small stuff because transforms don't count as triggering summon effects. So while the bush is 1-1, your champion is still going to be relatively strong. And then with Nidley, you could maybe throw on a Gale Force so you can get another strike in. 
but Nidalee can push a lot of damage very early, so she could be a very solid pickup here. LeBlanc also can be a decent answer to small stuff with her combat trick that she's making every single round. And then Yumi, as well as Poro King, also can be pretty good here. Poro King, specifically if you have Spirit of the Buru, you can scale your units up very quickly. And so you can counter small stuff quite effectively. And then for Yumi, with your attachments, again, they don't trigger summon effects. So she can also be pretty solid right here. 59, we have three stars and Swain. Savage Mysticism, each player gets a mana gem. And Adorbis. So round start, transform the player's strongest follower into a 1-1 squirrel and silence it. Again, a pretty broad rule set. Adorbis, annoying, but if had to deal with it many times at this point. This doesn't affect champions though, so go for maybe a more champion focused deck. And with the Savage Mysticism, you might want to bring out some of your slightly higher cost champions, such as like your Elder Dragons or maybe Volley Bears, because they can be a decent way for you to close out the game without having to get countered by the Adorbis. Challenge 60, getting close. We have four stars, Tom Kench, as well as Azir. Once again, Vestige of Helia, so all your spells costing less and having permanent spell shield. Now, like we talked about earlier, Morgana, she can target enemies and still shackle them, even if the spell or skill she's using is blocked by the spell shield. So she can circumvent this and still be a solid option here. Can also go for some champions such as like Master Yi that you're spamming a lot of spells. So getting that cost reduction really good there and then you don't really target enemies with your spells. So that spell shield is again, just helping you. Vicious enemy though, making everything harder. Beyond Mere Flesh, again, just buffing up all the units, all the enemy units, and then calling for aid. This one shouldn't trigger. You should be able to end the game before this goes off. But if you let the game go too long, they'll get a random level two champion. So Morgana or Lee Sin would generally be my go-to for this one. Nami also would be solid, really good with that Vestige of Helia, but you can also go for some of your more brawler champions because you know you don't have to worry about the enemy as much. So like Kane, Tom Kench, or Garen. Granted, a lot of them have spells that will get blocked by the spell shield, but they're all pretty good knowing you don't have to deal with enemy spells at all. 61, four stars. We have Ezreal with repetition. When any player plays a spell, they copy it with these same targets. Obviously going to be very annoying for Ezreal. We also have Mana Leak. So when the player plays a spell, create a fleeting copy of it in the foe's hands. So you have to be very careful because whatever you play, the enemy is going to be able to play right back at you. And Ezreal, he has the effect that all of his spells cost one. So even if you play like a five cost spell and you're like, oh, he doesn't have mana for it. He actually does because it's going to go down to a one cost spell. So this is one you really have to be careful with and it can be quite a pain to deal with. You often need to try to bait the enemy into losing their mana. So maybe playing a spell that isn't really going to have that big an effectiveness, but you bait them into then playing it, waiting until they're out of mana and then dumping all your spells. So this one definitely can be a pain to deal with. Also for Ezreal, generally you don't want to play your Morgana. As Morgana, all of your curses are going to be reset down to one mana for the Ezreal. So that can be very difficult to deal with, which I know from experience because my chat made me play Morgana here. So while the repetition makes you want to play spells, you might actually want to hold off and not do that. I will say though, Vagar can be solid here, especially if you have him high enough. So where his darknesses are free, because then you can just wait for Ezreal to be out of mana and you just have a stockpile of darknesses, or darkness, I guess, that you can just rain down on the enemy. That being said though, I don't know if the darkness that you cast will be zero cost for the enemy, so that could actually be an issue. Hopefully they would make the enemy actually have to pay for them though, at least the one mana. Definitely a time though to break out like your Aurelian soul and try to just nuke this one down. Same for like Jinx or even go for some of your champions that are very strong but don't rely on spells. So like if you have like a triple epic relic, Elder Dragon or potentially even Volley Bear, this is really a time to use them. Also can be really good for like Nidalee because a lot of the spells you're playing are your ambush spells that won't have any effect on the enemy. This is definitely a challenging one though. 62, four stars, we have Darius as well as Tom Kench, which once again, Frenzied Fighting, a Vicious Enemy, and Big Feast. So the enemy is going to have more health, more Nexus health, starting mana, and hand size. 
and you're going to get the 2-2, two, two, but deal 2 damage to your units at the end of the round. So we've been over this many times at this point, but you can go for like Tom Kench and just try to scale off of the frenzied fighting and end the game very quickly. Same for like Darius, using those extra stats to your advantage, you can get your rallies going and try to end as soon as possible. And also can be decent for like Kane as well as Garen that you can scale up. And it's even good for someone like Volibear, where you're fine with being more aggressive and just trying to get kills so you can get more sigils to get bigger units on the board. 63, 4 stars, we have Ezreal. Only the strong, so round end, kill all units except each player's strongest. Vicious enemy, so plus 10 nexus health, starting hand size, and starting mana. And then the calling for aid. Now this is one you can actually be a little bit cheesy and throw out like a ash that way you're frostbiting whatever their strongest unit is so then it will actually die at the end of the round because it will no longer be the strongest so that is a pretty cheesy strategy you could go with if you wanted could also go for someone like yasuo he's really good into only the strong because that strongest unit is just getting stunned every round and you could very well just have your yasuo as your strongest unit scaling up also pretty good for garen or kane where again you can have one strong unit that is just dominating the board, either with your single combats, if you're playing Garen. And you can also go for someone like Morgana, really anyone with a lot of control, even Annie. Just the fact that they're going to have one unit on their side of the board that you can constantly try to CC and control. Also a very valid strategy. All right, 64, we have four stars, Tom Kench, Arcane Emissions, Game Start, all players start with three spell mana, Vicious Enemy, and Welcome to the Murder Bridge could go for Kindred to be able to kill their Howling Abyss. Lee Sin, also his new spell can do that as well. With this starting mana, you'll be able to play that potentially round one, so that's pretty solid. And you also have your Talia. All of them can get rid of that bridge if needed. This is a pretty broad one though. Not a lot of big modifiers, just the fact that the enemy is going to be really strong and they're going to get this landmark. So if you can deal with that landmark with some of the champions we mentioned, you'll be off to a pretty good start. Kindred would probably be the best option because you'll just summon your prey round one. You can immediately use your four cost slow spell to kill your prey to destroy that landmark. And then their legendary modifier just like that gone round one. 65, four stars. We have Caitlyn as well as Lee Sin. Mercy killings round and kill all damaged units. So again, yours and the enemies. We also have Vicious Enemy again and Noxian Might pretty deadly giving them a lot more power and overwhelm so you're gonna have a hard time blocking this now you can definitely go for someone like jack to just again ping the enemy board for damage really good to make them die at the end of the round also annie would be pretty solid here same with Jin. they both have some removal spells that they can hit the enemy with even if it doesn't remove them um, initially they'll then die at the end of the round also they both have some good cc for just making sure the enemy can't attack so both of them would be pretty solid here. And same with Morgana. If you have her at two stars, the enemy's shackled units will take damage at the end of the round and then die. So pretty good right there. Now 66, four and a half stars, Tom Kench as well as Draven. All cards cost two less. Mana flow, game start, the foe gets a mana gem. Vicious enemy, so again, even more mana. And next to health and hand size. And then hemorrhage round and deal one damage to the player's nexus for each unit the foe has. So with the fact that all cards are costing less and they get two plus starting mana, they're essentially playing every single card they have round one. So you need to really be ready for this level of enemy aggression because they're going to be coming after you with a vengeance at the very start of the game. This will be a great time to break out your Jinx to just try to decimate the enemy board with all of your damage, especially if you go for a build where you like discard your hand round one and then you can play all of your pow pows. That would be very helpful right here. Probably the best solution for this challenge. Challenge 67, four stars, Caitlyn as well as Aurelia. So we have repetition when any player plays a spell, copy with the same targets. Now both of these bosses do have a decent amount of spells. So this will be a bit annoying, but they're not necessarily spells based champions. So really going for any of your spells based champions will be a solid option here. The enemy also has the vicious enemy and sovereign's domination. So if you have any units die, they will get them at the next round start, at least if they are a follower. So this will be another opportunity to throw out like your 
Vagar for the repetition, really being able to just annihilate the enemy board with all of your darkness. Annie, Jin, Master Yi, Varus, Nami, all of them will be really good for this repetition. You just gotta try to keep your units from dying. And since this is Aurelia and even their Caitlyn, both of these are gonna be played round one because the enemy is going to have mana to do, to do that. You want to hopefully kill these units round one. So especially Vagar, really good for just being able to nuke their units right away. All right, challenge 68, four stars. We have Gangplank with Mercy Killings. Once again, kill all damaged units, Vicious Enemy and Calling for Aid. At this point, we've seen all of these many times, not really gonna go over them in specifics, but for the Mercy Killings, really good for pinging the enemy board for damage. Granted, Gangplank is gonna be able to do that to you as well. So be ready for that. Now you can't always go for a Guardian Angel on your champion. So you can try to have them revive once this kills them. So this is one to really be aware of just while you're playing. Be careful what blocks you're taking because don't think, oh, I have a really big champion. They can block and be fine because they'll still die at the end of the round. But that being said, you can still block some of the enemy's big units and just have them die at the end of the round. If you still have some runs left with some of your champions that can hit the entire enemy board, such as like Jack, potentially even Misfortune, Jinx, although you probably have to use her for some other challenges, all of them would be solid here. But also, even if you don't have that, just really be mindful of how you're taking your attacks and blocks and just constantly be thinking of mercy killings and how your attacks and blocks will shape the course of that challenge. Now, 69, four and a half stars. We have unstoppable force, so allies have three, three and overwhelm and can't block. Vicious enemy, prophet of an elder god and after image. So this one is kind of a better version of the Viego power. Just round start, the foe revives an ephemeral copy of the strongest dead follower. So yours or the enemy, and it doesn't matter if it died last round or not, just the strongest dead follower that's died throughout the course of the game. So the enemy is getting a ton of free value right here. You have to be as aggressive as possible and try to end this game in the first round or two. Now Darius is very good for the unstoppable force, but there's a lot of champions you can play with this one, but this just forces you to be hyper aggressive because since you can't block, you have to put on as much pressure at, on the enemy as you can and just kill them before they can kill you. So while Darius is good here, you can also go for like Samira, LeBlanc, Pike even, really just most of the decks that are focused more on their units, using their units to end the game, and especially decks that can bring out a lot of units very quickly. Darius is especially good with this just because he's also giving his units extra power and overwhelm already. And then with his second star power, if he can attack with, I believe 15 total power, he can then rally, so attack again. A lot of champions you can play here, but this is 69 and pretty much need to pick the strongest champion you have left. But pretty much all the Noxus champions, especially LeBlanc, Samira, and Darius will all be very solid here. Challenge 70, last challenge, we have Fizz, Unnatural Selection, the player's units have Evolve, Vicious Enemy, Let's Rock, and Beyond Mere Flesh. So the Rockfall path, they're summoning this. Not that difficult, but you definitely need to pay attention to it have a wide enough board that this isn't going to obliterate any of your stronger champions. And then beyond mere flesh, this is going to buff up the enemy's units by a decent amount because they normally have one to two keywords. This is Fizz, and so he's already an early game champion. Him getting some extra stats and then even more starting mana, he will be pretty annoying. Now the unnatural selection, pretty good if you have your Poro King with Spirit of the Buru, or if you can drop like your Evelyn or potentially Elise. All of them can be pretty aggressive in the early game and get this evolved trigger print very quickly. This is the last challenge though, so if you have any runs left with like your Jinx, LeBlanc, Diana, Elder, Aurelian Soul, any of those crazy S tier champions, this is really the last opportunity you have to pull them out. Thanks for watching. If this video helped you at all, please like and subscribe. This video kind of takes forever to make. Looking at the recording right now, we're getting very close to two hours. I'm gonna to try to edit that down as much as possible, but these videos take a lot to put out. So again, if it helped you at all, please like and subscribe, and I hope you all have a great day.